Okay, so in this video, we want to introduce the concept of series. Now, all a series is, is a sum of an infinite list of real numbers. So in essence, it's an infinite sum. Let us first consider three examples, two of which we have already seen in previous videos. So suppose we look at this series, the sum of n as n goes from 1 to infinity. So we're summing an infinite number of real numbers from 1 to n, and the numbers are n. So we can write this out, we can expand the series. So n equals 1, we get 1, plus when n equals 2, plus 2, plus when n equals 3, plus 3, and so forth. So here we're trying to add all positive integers. And of course, as you add 1 plus 2 plus 3 plus 4, the sum becomes larger and larger and larger. As we are adding or trying to add all positive integers, the sum clearly blows up to positive infinity. So this series diverges. That's really all this series is. We are trying to see if we can add an infinite list of real numbers. In this case, it does not exist, and so we say the series diverges. Let's now look at the two examples we have seen in previous videos. So what if we're summing from 1 to infinity again, 1 over n? This is a more interesting sum. So when n is 1, we get 1, plus when n is 2, we get plus 1 half, when n is 3, plus 1 third, plus 1 quarter, and so forth. So here we're trying to add all the reciprocals of the positive integers, 1 over 1 plus 1 over 2 plus 1 over 3 plus 1 over 4. So again, we're trying to add an infinite list of real numbers, and we're asking again, will this give us a real number, or will it diverge? Now, the fact that this series blows up to infinity was actually fairly obvious. We're adding larger and larger terms, the terms themselves are blowing up to infinity, so when we add them up, the result blows up to infinity. Now what's interesting here is we're adding an infinite number of terms, or trying to, but the terms are getting smaller and smaller and smaller, right? As we add more and more terms, every consecutive term is a little smaller than the previous term, plus 1 over 5, plus 1 over 6, plus 1 over 7. So this series is not as obvious as this one, but if you recall, we have proved in a previous video, by comparing the series to the integral of 1 over x, that this actually also blows up to infinity. So even though we are adding smaller and smaller terms, the terms are not small enough so that the sum will give us a finite real number. So this series diverges as well. And we also looked at the sum from 1 to infinity, 1 over n squared. And if you expand, you'll get 1 over 1 squared is 1, plus 1 over 2 squared is 4, plus 1 over 3 squared is 9, plus 1 over 4 squared is 16, and so forth. So now we're adding the reciprocals of the squares of the positive integers. And again, we're asking, will this infinite sum exist by giving us a real number, or will it again blow up? This is again a non-obvious problem. We're adding an infinite list of real numbers, but they are getting smaller and smaller and smaller. We saw in the previous example that this was not enough. These terms were getting smaller and smaller, but not small enough, and the sum still blew up. And we have proved again in the previous video that this series actually does converge. So the terms we're trying to add are getting smaller and smaller, and they are small enough so that if we add all of them, we obtain a real number, and what was far from obvious is that the exact real number given by this series, this infinite sum, is pi squared over 6. So you see that it is possible to add smaller and smaller real numbers, but if the numbers are not getting small enough, fast enough, the series may still blow up. But if you're adding smaller and smaller numbers, and the numbers are getting small enough, fast enough, the infinite sum, the series, can converge. 
to an actual real number. But these two examples are rather fancy. Let's now look at two examples of series that are much simpler than these two examples. And as we will see later on, the two examples we're about to consider are special cases of what's known as geometric series. So here's the first example. What if we considered the decimal expansion of 1 over 3? If we try and divide 1 by 3, how many times can we fit 3 into 1? 0. Multiply by 10. We can fit 3 into 10 3 times. 3 times 3 is 9. Subtract, we get 1. 10 again. And now we're looping forever. We're asking how many times can we fit 3 into 10? Well, 3 times. 3 times 3 is 9. We subtract times 10. And you see that we will loop forever. And so we'll get 3, 3, 3, 3, 3 forever. So we have an infinite decimal expansion. So if we look at 1 over 3, in its decimal expansion form, it is an infinite decimal expansion. 3 will repeat itself forever. So 0 0.3333 forever. And let's now split the decimal places to create an infinite sum, a series. So this is 0.3 plus 0 0.03 plus 0 0.003 plus 0 0.0003, and we have an infinite sum. As the decimal expansion of 1 over 3 is 0.3 forever, this sum will never stop. So we have an infinite sum, we have a series. Let's rewrite these as rational numbers and see if we can find a pattern and write this infinite series concisely using sigma notation. 0.3 is 3 over 10 plus 0 0.03 is 3 over 100, 0 0.003 is 3 over 1,000, plus 0 0.0003 is 3 over 10,000, and so forth. Now let's rewrite the denominators as powers of 10. So we have 3 over 10 to the 1, plus 3 over 10 squared is 100, plus 3 over 10 cubed is 1,000, plus 3 over 10 to the 4 is 10,000, and so forth. So we clearly, hopefully, now see a pattern. So we can write this very concisely using sigma notation. We are summing. Well, the only thing changing is the exponent of 10. So we have 3 over 10 to some exponent that is a dummy variable. We'll use n. And n begins at 1. And as the sum is infinite, n has to go up to positive infinity. So you see we have just expressed 1 over 3 as an infinite series. If you want, we can do two things. We could factor 3 outside the series. As we are summing with respect to n, 3 is a constant with respect to n, so we can pull it out. And now we're left with 1 over 10 to the n, but 1 to the n is 1, so we can write this as 1 over 10 to the n. And this series is known as a geometric series. Summing, increasing powers of a fixed base. But we'll discuss this in more details later on. So a very simple example of how we can express a real number, in this case 1 over 3, as an infinite sum of positive numbers. But as the terms are getting small enough, the infinite sum does exist and returns exactly 1 over 3. Let's look at another example, but now this will be a geometric example. Very simple argument, but really nice at the same time. Suppose we look at the interval from 0 to 1. So, let's add the length of this interval, therefore 1, by adding smaller and smaller pieces. So first, we'll add one half of it.
But now we're missing the other half. Well, we're going to add. We're missing this part. We'll add half of that. Well, half of a half is a quarter. So we're going to add one quarter. But we're still missing this part. We're going to add again half of it. This is a quarter. Half of a quarter is 1 over 8. We're left with 1 over 8. We're going to add again half of that. Half of 1 over 8 is 1 over 16. And we don't have 1 yet. And we're going to keep doing this forever, right? This will have to be an infinite series as every step of the way we don't add all of what's left over but only half of it. So this will never stop. We have an infinite sum. And we see that as we add more and more halves of what's remaining, we're missing less and less and less. So if we never stop this process in the end, what we're missing will shrink to zero and will therefore be adding the entire length of the unit interval. So the result would be adding up to 1. Now let's rewrite this hopefully concisely using sigma notation if we can find a pattern. And the pattern is hopefully fairly straightforward. We have 1 over 2 to the 1. 4 is 1 over 2 squared. Well, 4 is 2 squared. Plus 8, 1 over 8, which is 2 cubed. 16 is 2 to the 4. And then it would be a half of 16, so it would be 1 over 32, which is 1 over 2 to the 5, and so forth. So we now see the pattern. So we are summing 1 over 2 to some power. The power is the only thing changing, so we need a dummy variable, n. The power begins at 1, and it never stops. It goes all the way up to positive infinity. So once again, we have expressed a real number as an infinite sum, a series of real numbers. And we can write this again as 1 over 2 to the n, as 1 to the n is 1, and this again is known as a geometric series. We are summing increasing powers of a fixed number. So two very nice examples, 1 over 3, and this clever way of breaking down the unit interval into an infinite set of segments. And if we add all the segments, we get the length of the unit interval. So you see, it is possible to add an infinite list, an infinite set of real numbers, and the result converging, existing, and giving a fixed real number. The key point is, and this is the intuition, if you are to add an infinite number of positive numbers and the result giving back a real number, the numbers you are adding must be getting smaller and smaller and smaller. If the numbers you're adding are small enough, then you will get a converging series and you'll converge to a real number. If the numbers you're adding are getting small but not quickly enough, then the sum will grow out of bounds and it will blow up to positive infinity. And that's really just the intuition. So keep in mind that the intuition is the only way to add an infinite list of real numbers and that returning a real number is that as you add more and more of the numbers in your list, they are getting smaller and smaller and smaller. And they have to be getting small enough quickly enough.